Welcome back, fellow spinoff investors. This is Greg Miller again, and we're talking today a little bit about tender offers. Hey everyone, this is Greg Miller from Spinoff Investing Simplified. I'm your host here at Spinoff Investing Simplified's YouTube channel. And I appreciate you stopping by and taking a look around. If you appreciate this video or any of the others, please subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you along. We also appreciate your comments and uh, smashing that like button makes helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. We sure appreciate your time with us and hope you enjoy this video. Thanks a bunch. Welcome back. Sometimes during corporate actions that lead to a number of special situations, tender offers are made to expedite the corporate action. Spinoffs are not excluded from these tender offers. A recent divestiture by Ecolab had one of these tender offers. And today, I'm going to discuss that what tender offers are and what you might gain by looking into them. I will also briefly review the tender offer from Ecolab. So let's get to it. So first and foremost, what is a tender offer? Well, a tender offer is a transaction used to acquire a significant number of shares of a company without drastically affecting the share price of the company. And uh, some things that we need to think about when we hear about tender offers is first uh, i'd like to share a thought from christian reither from kareen capital uh, i listened to a podcast from him where he was interviewed by the manual of ideas podcast um, host and christian reither said that small investors with only ten thousand dollars should invest should invest that ten thousand dollars into tender offers and there's two ways tender offers can be used in your investing practice that i can think of and the first is a two to three week trade where you get an the announcement and you trade uh, over the announcement and then the other one is a way to understand the management's true objectives for long-term investments so going back to the father of uh, special situations, we look at Schiller's capital gains in tender offers. And he, he says that you need to look at seven different things to understand where the capital gains can be found. And the number one one is the fundamental principle of tender offers is that they usually offer more than the going price for a company's shares or debt. Uh, we're going to be talking about equity tender offers today. Uh, but understand that tender offers are found in the debt market. They're also found in the preferred stock market. But in this particular case, we're going to focus on what a, an investor with $10,000 can do. And we'll be focused mostly on the common equity. Number two, the securities that are sought through tender may rise substantially through the tender offer price. And this is just because there is a lot of trading that is involved for the tender offer. Tender offer prices, number three, may rise to expedite the cons consummation of the buyer's objective. Uh, so sometimes uh, the buyer's objective is not being met by the tender offer, which it usually is disclosed in that tender offer. And so the people that are offering that tender offer, either from third party or from the company itself, will sweeten the deal for those that are uh, participating in the tender offer. Number four, tender prices may reflect the true value of the underlying security. So uh, Schiller gives a, gives a great example where the true value of the underlying security of one of the examples that he was looking at was worth about $80 a share. But uh, in the tender offer, it was offered for 55 and doing a little bit of digging and understanding what the management team was doing uh, gave a true value for that underlying security where it eventually sold for over $90 a share. Number five, the stock may decline after the tender invitation. So this is something to pay attention to that after the tender invitation completes, and I don't know for sure how it will be with Ecolab, but I imagine that Ecolab will have some selling pressure after this tender invitation as people get out of this particular trade. Um, so uh, what Schiller would recommend is if you feel confident that it is going to decline, and I'm not recommending that you short this, but because I don't know where it will go, 
I'm just looking at it for how it would go. Uh, but if you felt confident that it would, you would sh you could short it, then you could short it uh, based on what you expect Ecolab to actually be worth. Uh, number six, tender offers may disclose a battle for the control of a company. So sometimes if a third party is buying a company, uh, what comes to mind is uh, the Wright Medical Group International right now. Uh, they are they're being acquired by Stryker. And it's not necessarily a battle for the company right now, but that particular tender offer keeps getting renewed. And the last I saw, the only about five or six percent of the shares were actually offered up for tender, meaning that they might have to sweeten the deal in order to make that a better, uh, something that people would want to be a part of. And sweetening the deal would mean an increase share price. Uh, number seven, finally, there's a there's sinking fund opportunities that harbor capital gain potential. So often with preferred stock and debt, the there is a sinking fund provision in both of those uh, types of capitalization uh, products that they want to have a sinking fund of every year they're going to get rid of 10 to 20 percent of the debt or 10 to 20 percent of the preferred and that would allow the opportunity to get capital gains from a tender offer as the years go by and maintain the the normal dividend payments that those two uh two types of investments uh, offer to an investor so We've looked at what Schiller says. Now let's look, uh, let's look at the Ecolab tender offer for small investors. So Ecolab, they were, they're merging their Champion X business with Apergy. This has been on for about a year now. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed in my spinoff research, uh, I didn't find the Champion X business to be that, that uh, attractive, uh, nor was I really that interested in owning Apergy as well. Uh, but on May 1st, uh, 2020, as part of the this merger slash split off of Ecolab's Champion X business, they did a tender offer. And for a small investor, it had something that you should pay attention to, and that is it has an odd lot provision. So odd lot provisions are uh, beneficial to anyone that has less than 100 shares. So if you have an odd lot, it means that you don't have 100 shares of a company. Um, it, so what happened is if Ecolab, if you tender your shares for uh, Ecolab, from Ecolab to Champion X as part of this split off, you get $111 worth and 11 cents worth of Champion X shares for every one hundred dollars of Ecolab shares that you that you um, you tender, now this had a specific thing. They limited that to an exchange ratio of twenty four dollars or twenty four point six six seven shares per Ecolab share, and that makes a difference on the value that that you might see out of doing the tender itself. So. What a small investor could do with the odd lot provision, they they have some options that they could do. If you have ten ten thousand dollars, in this case, it would be almost twenty thousand dollars that you could you could put in there to tender because uh, Ecolab was one hundred and ninety when this when this started, and you could go ahead and <clears throat> tender those shares uh, and short to limit your risk. Apergy at the at the price that that you saw interestingly enough though murray schiller probably one of the most brilliant minds when we look at special situations you could have just played the ecolab share price you could have bought the shares when the tender was announced at about 190 dollars and then sold them when the offer expired which was yesterday uh, may 29th and you would have gotten almost a 12% return in 30 days. So that is one way to just make life easy when you have a small trading account 
is just identify, oh, is this a tender offer that I want to be a part of? And then go ahead and and follow go with the price performance because typically share price performance will meet the actual value of this uh, of the tender offer. Some other things that you might consider with the tender offer and Ecolab, you could tender those shares and that should be done close to the end of the transaction window uh, so that you can make sure that either the shares will be tendered and you have a pretty high probability that you'll receive the shares out of that. Um, and then you also have, you could API, they could short Apergee to limit the downside risk if Apergee price falls. Now, with that in mind, if you short Apergee and it goes up, then you lose a lot of the value that would be there. Uh, some other benefits that uh, you might consider is what benefits does Ecolab gain by eliminating small investors in this tender offer? So this is more of a longer play. Does Ecolab gain a lot to kind of clean out some of their their business and make it so that they are a better um, candidate for future financial transactions. So I'm not saying that Ecolab is going to do this. However, sometimes a tender offer will give the the owning the the owning business a chance to lower the number of small investors so that they can go ahead and then conduct uh, a private equity buyout or a merger of some sort and they can eliminate a lot of the possibility of some sort of um some some sort of of corporate action that they've been wanting to do but they can't do it because of that uh then finally the rights given to shares not accepted uh in this particular case were pretty interesting and so i'm going to actually go to Here's your odd lot pro, proration section. It says beneficial holders other than participants in any of Ecolab savings plans of less than 100 shares who validly tender all their shares will not be subject to proration and should complete this section in the applicable letter of transmittal entitled proration odd lot. If your odd lot shares are held by a broker for your account, you can contact the broker and request this preferential treatment. All your odd lot shares will be accepted for exchange without proration if Ecolab completes the exchange offer. So the benefit to this small investor when we talk about these odd lot provisions is it gives them a chance to ensure that their shares will be tendered for the, the price. And so uh, if you're doing a cash tender, that's really important because then it gives you the opportunity to just go ahead and take the odd lot provision and you get them at the price that you want that you can tender them at. But there's another thing here, and this is more on the Ecolab management. It says, if the exchange offer is oversubscribed and Ecolab cannot accept all tenders of Ecolab common stock at the exchange ratio, then shares of Ecolab's common stock are, that are validly tendered and not withdrawn will generally be subject to proration. Proration for each tendering stockholder will be based on the proportion that the total number of shares of Ecolab common stock to be accepted for exchange bears to the total number of shares of Ecolab common stock validly tendered and not properly withdrawn, and the number of shares of Ecolab common stock validly tendered and not properly withdrawn by the shareholder, and not the stockholder's aggregate ownership of, e of shares of Ecolab common stock. Uh, Ecolab will announce the preliminary proration factor for the exchange offer on this website after the, the expiration of the exchange offer. And I should see, we should see that probably this next week. Uh, upon determining the number of shares of Ecolab common stock validly tendered for exchange and not properly withdrawn, Ecolab will announce the final results of the exchange offer, including the final proration factor for the exchange offer. So proration factor right here, um these exchange ratios they limited it at 24.6667 so it started going into effect for the upper limit exchange ratio back on the 11th day of this and 
it's technically going to have that upper limit exchange done. If the exchange offer, offer is consummated, but the exchange offer is not fully subscribed, the remaining shares of Champion X common stock owned by Ecolab will be distributed on a pro rata basis in a spinoff. The cleanup spinoff to Ecolab shareholders whose shares of Ecolab common stock remain outstanding after consummation of the exchange offer. Any Ecolab shareholder who validly tenders shares <coughs> of Ecolab common stock that are accepted for exchange in the exchange offer will, will, with respect to such shares, waive the rights to receive or forfeit any rights to shares of Champion X common stock distributed in the cleanup spinoff, if any. So, um, Basically, you know, you, you look at Greenblatt and he talks about how you can get into rights offers. And that has been a hard thing for me to find. But this is an example of where you might be able to get rights offerings. Um, because you have to participate in, in these types of activities. And anyway, um, just some things to think about. In my view, the Ecolab uh, management team thinks that they can do much better without all of their oil and gas-based business out of the Champion X things, but they made this decision long before some of the issues that we've seen in the oil industry over the past three months or so with the Saudi Arabia and Russia oil war. So. There might be a lot of opportunity in both Apergy and Ecolab post spinoff uh, due to all of this. Um, full disclosure, I have done an odd lot tender offer, or odd lot, I've participated in the odd lot tender offer portion of this particular uh, transaction. And um, I'll let you know how it turns out. I expect it to be a pretty decent return maybe not as good as if I had found out about this on the day of the tender offer and then just bought and then bought the common stock for Ecolab on that day and then held it until the end of the transaction. Uh, if I'd done that, I'd be sitting right now with basically a, an 11% or 12% return and I'd probably have sold out and just been fine for one month of return. To me, that's a pretty exciting thing to do. and. Uh, you know, if you if you like to see more of these types of things, let me know in the comments section below. I really appreciate uh, you watching, and thanks a bunch, guys. As we finish up, we have one final note for you. This video was made for educational purposes only. Any companies mentioned in this presentation were discussed for educational purposes only. Discussing such companies and the specifics about them is for illustrative purposes only and not a solicitation to purchase them. We recommend that you conduct your own research and identify why you might want to own the company yourself before you commit any funds. We also recommend that you seek the services of a financial advisor that has considered your situation as your fiduciary. May your education here grow your knowledge, improve your personal investing performance, and give you the confidence to take control of your future. Thanks.